Dazzle? Okay, so um, just wanted to kind of get your um, outlook and goals wise, you know, obviously having not played the bubble season and coming into this one yeah, for what you're trying to do on the court. I know everything you're doing off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Roz. Um, my sis from another miss. I'm really excited to be back on the court, and I think my goals are to compete and to be the best version of myself. And I know my journey has been different. It's dealt its up highs and lows, you know, with injuries and pushing through and stuff. But you know, being able to, I was so inspired by everything that happened in the bubble, supporting the Sparks from a distance um, and supporting all the sisters in the WNBA from a, a distance. But like, there's, it's major FOMO. Like I had the FOMO of the century. And so now today to be out and I just walked off the court and I looked at Nick, I was like, oh my God, I'm back. It felt like it was the first day of school. So for me, it's just getting back to competing at a high level, being the best player I can be and, and um, being a great teammate. I will go over to Rashawn Haylock of KTLA. Hey, Shanae. Um, what did you miss the most while you were out last season? What I missed the most was the feeling of going to war with your team, your squad, and competing, and competing at a high level, and, and um, you know, pursuing a championship, like, the reason I came to LA is to win a championship with my sister. And so I missed out on a year of getting closer to that, but I guess now it's like, pick, keep that same energy because I'm really glad to be back. So I would just say it was hard for me to watch the games, knowing like, I was like, oh my gosh, I wish I could have been out there. Like set that screen, grab that rebound, you know, take that charge, whatever needs to be done. But everything happens for a reason. And I'm just glad to be in this position this year to be able to help. We'll go over to Miriam Swanson with the LA Daily News. Oh, whoops. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, Welcome back to work. <laughs> or this, this work, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I got to ask you about 144, the documentary, um, and just kind of like how excited you are about that, and, and a little bit about like what you are, your job with that was. Wow, Whew, this documentary is like my baby. Uh, 144 is so special. So, you know, opting out and protecting my body based on my injury history from last season, it was really heartbreaking having to make that decision. And it was kind of crazy because as a member of the executive committee of the WNBA, I was a part of the negotiation process the whole time. And then when it came to almost going for the bubble, I was like, oh my gosh, like maybe this is not the best choice for me and my longevity. Um, and so, I was so inspired by all the women that were competing, my sisters, literally in the wobble, that I was like, I wanna make sure I keep that same energy, and if I have a platform to amplify everything that they do, let's connect the dots. And so it literally was brainstorming. I, I had a phone call with Neck, and Neck was like, yo, like, it's crazy, we have 144 women here in the bubble. And I was like, hmm. C called uh, Commissioner Engelbert. Uh, called uh, ESPN Films. I was like, can we create content? We have all players in one location. And so after that, um, myself, my agent, Allison Gaylor, and two women producers of women-led production got cameras in the bubble more fly on the wall for probably the most meaningful season ever, a, a season where we crowned a champion, but more importantly, created so much change. And I think that what makes 144 spe so special is that the players knew that it was a player behind the camera. So we saw a lot of their strengths, but we also saw vulnerability because, you know, the crew would be walking around and people like, oh, are you like, isn't that weird that there's a camera? And they're like, no, that's just Janae and ESPN, like doing her thing, trying to amplify our game. And so even though I wasn't able to play in the bubble, I feel grateful to have this project that actually will amplify and tell the story that really matters, you know, of the 144 standing together I mean, we have, like, there's some crazy scenes we have from, you know, reacting to Jacob Blake. And I remember having a phone call with NECA saying, like, NECA, like, this is a powerful moment. Will you wear a mic? And in, under no normal circumstances, I, if it was anyone else, NECA probably, like, no, we have to pre protect the players. But just knowing that I was on the other side, NECA wore a mic, and we captured some intense conversations. And just, you know, having mics on the players in playoffs, too, it just, you get that duality of, competing at a high level, but also these women advocating for change. And so literally it's like an hour or two of my day to day each and every day since the season started last year. 
just helping curate and shepherd this story. And so I'm so excited to be back on the court, but it's perfect that um, that film will come out you know, the night before, because I think it's a, I think it'll remind us how amazing, it's not just the people I'm competing in camp are, but the league is in general. We'll go over to Chris Camello with Nightcast Media. Hey, Shanae, how are you? Hey! Uh, so, just going back to the basketball aspect, you know, um, What's that like? It, was there any rust that you had to shake off from not playing competitively, uh, you know, for, for a year? Was there any like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta work on this or work on that? Just, you know, kind of describe just being back out of the court and ramping up and, and that aspect of it. I haven't played a game in two years, so of course there's gonna be growing pains these first few weeks. But that's the beauty of training camp, and for me, it's not just like, oh, I'm back on the court. I'm holding myself accountable to being better, and that means expanding my game. And so it's taking all the necessary baby steps in order to be able to do that. And so, um, you know, I'm really excited about the opportunity that this season presents, not just for being back on the court and, and pushing through all of that beginning stuff, but more so pushing through in ways that I can get better to help my team. So, yeah, of course it's going to be like, oh, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, it's a rhythm thing. Um, but that's why training camp is awesome. You know, I have two and a half weeks to get right before the game and and we have a, an amazing coach and Coach Fisher that knows exactly what the process should look like, the acceleration. So I'm not afraid to miss in order to figure out how to make. And so you're going to see me shoot my shot this year. I'm going to be shooting and, I, and I'm excited for it, but I've worked for it and it's just about, you know, putting everything together. So, yeah, I think my motto is like, you know, um, just go hard and be fearless, and I think people will probably see that different aspect of what I'm trying to bring this year. Uh, time for two more for Shanae, and then we'll go to Christy, we'll go to John W. Davis, what's that? What's good, John? What's going on, how you doing? I'm good, miss seeing you here, but it's all good. Uh, hope you're here to see you soon. Uh, question for you, you were kind of talking about this, but see if you can get a little bit more specific. Obviously, off seasons are a great time to get better. You have this training camp, but you know, over the last time period, you know, what are some new elements that you're going to be bringing this year that I should be looking out for? Face up shot, face up shot. You know, ever since I was at Stanford, um, I, you guys know I was banging in the in the paint. You know, back to the basket. But this league forces you to grow. So I think it's just being a little bit more versatile, working on my face up, working on my timing, and more importantly, reading the defense. So those are the two things, making sure I slow down, read the defense, and then shoot, because I know I can. And so it's a process of doing it. <laughs> Thank you, John. We will end with, oh, Pepper, did you put your hand? Pepper, first into the next. What's up, Pepper? I'm good. I'm great. So I was just wondering, well, I know I'm sure there are things that every team um, is looking for coming out of training camp, but what are this team's goals for training camp? Work. I mean, it's simple as that. We have a group of players that are committed to putting the work in. And so I think this is a special year because now I think, um, you know, we have a core that really is excited for the opportunity that probably people may not expect. And the best way to do that is by working as hard as we can, you know? So having a group that wants to stay after and shoot, uh, watch extra video, and not just do that, but also motivate while doing that. Like, I'm in drills today and KT's right behind me, Kristen Tolliver, she's like, yeah, make that, you know, like just those little things where everyone's equally invested in each other. And I think that special chemistry and also the work ethic is going to translate to who this team is this entire season. Thank you so much, Shanae. Uh, thanks, media, for your questions. Ah, I'm good, I'm so happy to be back. Bye, y'all. We'll start with Rashad Haylock with KTLA. Hey, Coach. What's up, Rashad? What's going on? Um, how different is your approach to this training camp, um, considering 
And there's some tough decisions that are going to have to be made, you know, to get to 12. How different is that for you now compared to, to previous years? Um, yeah, no, it, it is It is very different. Uh, you know, we, we really do have a group uh, that, you know, if it were possible to to keep all 15 players, we, we would do it. Uh, you know, we, we have that type of group this year. We're very fortunate to be in that position. Um, so, yes, that, that's different. Um, uh, it, it will require a lot more discussion on our part um, in terms of, you know, roster planning and scenarios, uh, you know, which team and which group will fit together the best uh, and best support, you know, our, our veteran players and, and, and our, uh, you know, our kind of more senior core group. So uh, still a good problem to have, though. Um, but but definitely will be a, a, a challenging job to take on this this year. Tiffany, do you win with the LA Times? Hey, Coach, we just talked to Christy, um, and obviously she didn't, when she signed with the Sparks, it was a very different roster, but now this year getting her back, what does this team need from her to be successful? Um, you know, honestly, just for... Christy to be, you know, KT, like that's, that's really what we need. Uh, you know, she, uh, even at this point in, in her career, uh, really still has all-star level game. Uh, you know, she can make all the plays with the basketball, um, you know, just the, the true definition of, of a combo guard that can play the point and do what needs to be done with the ball in her hands, as well as, uh, you know, being a guard that can cause problems for opponents off the ball. Um, I think her demeanor, her approach to her job, uh, how serious she takes this, uh, the commitment to excellence and, and, and being great, uh, our players are going to feel that every day. Uh, and so we're, we're very fortunate to have her back with our group this year. What's up, Ross? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, it's been really great to talk with the players before you. I, I wanted to understand some of the specifics of training camp, um, what you're willing to share. Just what are the first things you're trying to establish in these first few days first and first week? Like, what are you teaching and, and looking for right now? Yeah, great question. I think the, the, the first... Um, I think real priority for our group right now is establishing connection. Um, you know, we, we've turned our roster over a bit. Um, you know, Christy, uh, Chene, last season, uh, you know, didn't have time with players that were new to our team last year. So, you know, Brittany Sykes and Simone Augustus and players that joined us last year didn't get to spend, you know, any time really getting to know Christy and, and Chene, et cetera. So, um, our number one priority now and throughout this season will be to um, become as connected as possible as a team and, and maintain that connection throughout our season so that we can stay together um, in, in the best ways when things get hard uh, because they, they'll always get hard during the course of a season. So that's number one. And then in terms of on the court, um, you know, as an extension of the connection, just really you know, getting the team accustomed to being on the court together, getting to know one another, um, you know, just a lot of positive energy, shooting, ball handling, um, you know, things that aren't overly taxing to start out. Uh, you know, we've, we've added a new performance coach, uh, you know, that is gonna help us to evaluate and assess where our players are physically and the things that we can and cannot do uh, to, to start the year with each player. Uh, so that, you know, we can build this thing up the right way as time goes on. We're going to play faster. We're going to play harder. Um, and to be able to sustain that effort, uh, we have to be better athletes than we have been historically. So that's also um, one of our top priorities as we get started. All right, thanks, media. We're going to start it now with Krista Tolliver. Today's media availability, of course, brought to you by Busy Heart Seltzer. 
Uh, we'll go back to Roswell and the Davis Spectrum. Hey, what's up, Christy? How you doing? Good to see you. Well, I wish I could say the feeling's mutual, but I don't get to see you. <laughs> you can hear me. <laughs> All I see is this. Oh, you can hear me. What's up, girl? What's up? Uh, you know, we spoke a little bit about it, about it before, but um, kind of officially, since this is the first for the Sparks, just want to get your thoughts about, you know, returning to the court, you know, after, you know, not being with, you know, playing last year, what that feels like, what you worked on, um, what the goals are for you this time around, on the court specifically. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to be, you know, with a team again. Um, you know, I haven't played in a season since 2019, so uh, to be out on the court, um, obviously it's new, it's different, it's a lot of new faces. Um, but I'm just enjoying the, the newness of this whole new experience. And obviously I'm happy to be back in L.A. Um, wearing purple and gold, um, you know, to be able to work with, you know, NECA again and, and, and now just so many new faces. It's fun. It's, it's a challenge for me and, and being on the court today was a whole lot of fun. Just, just leading and learning at the same time. Um, you know, this is definitely going to be a fun group. Of, of players and uh, different personalities um, and they all want to get better and I want to help make them better. That's why I'm here. Um, I said that in my little introduction with the team today. You know, I'm here to serve and I'm here to, uh, to contribute in any way that I can. And, you know, during the off season, I did a lot of physical therapy um, on my knee and ankle and little, you know, little things like that just being uh, out for so long. Uh, there were, you know, areas where I needed to get stronger at and then on the court, um, you know, I was able to, to have a lot of time just with, with me and my trainer um, and, and continuing to build and, and build and build. So uh, looking forward to this season and the challenge and, and what I can bring. Uh, but after, after one day, I'm feeling great and just happy to be back on the floor. Tiffany, you ran with the LA Times. Hey, Christy, nice to talk to you. You mentioned all the new faces. Certainly this roster is quite different than the one that you signed to play with as a free agent last year. Um, so what are, what are some of your impressions of some of your new teammates, specifically Erica and Tay? Yeah, great. I mean, obviously new faces, faces that I, you know, I wasn't necessarily anticipating playing with, um, but I'm extremely thankful that I am. Um, you know, great personalities, great work ethic. Um, you know, they know how to play the game and they want to, they want to continue to get better and, um, you know, being in a similar position as myself, you know, I think that we will, throughout the course of the season, we will continue to elevate each other's games and we'll make one another better and that's what I'm really looking forward to. Um, just picking their brains and their, you know, them picking mine, uh, us continuing to grow together. Uh, but those two are high energy, uh, good vibes. Um, and, and really positive spirit, so it's, it's definitely going to be fun. Welcome to Mary Swanson with the LA Daily News. Hey, Christy, good to talk at, talk at you, I guess. <laughs> it's fancy, yes. Um, I wanted to ask you, as a coach, um, what, you, obviously you didn't play for Fishby last year in the bubble, but um, and from your conversations with him and what you've known, you know, gotten to learn from him the last year, like, what do you make of him and his sort of his coaching style, and what do you what do you think is going to work for you, and, and just kind of as yourself as a you know aspiring coach, like, what do you take from, from that? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited, you know, to work with the whole coaching staff. Um, it's they're great balance, they're great energy, um, great basketball minds. Um, specifically with Fish, uh, you know, he's experienced everything on the highest level, so. Um, you know, it's been nice, you know, doing individual workouts with him uh, these past couple of days leading up to camp, uh, really getting to know one another, um, you know, learning one another's language. Um, that's really important. Um, and just, you know, being on the same page and having the same vision for, for our team. And uh, he's super approachable, uh, easy to talk to. He's a, obviously, he's a basketball guy. I'm a basketball junkie. So, um, you know, I think this relationship is really, really going to work. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been looking forward to it for a long time now. So to be on the floor with them uh, in the first day, and, you know, a couple days prior, uh, it's just been great. And, you know, I will be a sponge, obviously, you know, pursuing coaching um, now and into the future. 
to me. I've, I've been surrounded by a lot of great coaches and I think he's gonna be really special for me in my journey um, in that path. Well, to Rashtan Haylock with KTLA. Hey, Christy. I'm curious, in 2019, you had red eyes, you know, in different categories. What was last season like, you know, knowing that you were coming off, uh, you know, such a great year? What was it like last year to kind of sit out um, and, and not be able to, to run it back? <laughs> run it back. Um, hard. It was really hard. Um, you know, obviously coming off of a high, winning a championship, um, it was it was difficult to not to not be on the floor. I've never experienced that in my life, where you know I, I wasn't playing in a season. Um, so it was extremely difficult. It was it was interesting. You know, I was able to kind of step out of myself and, and just be a fan of the game. And I watched all the games and all the players and. Um, you know, the, my perspective was a little different. My vantage point was different. So, I think in ways it was healthy. I'm, I'm, I'm more excited to play now than ever um, after you know an, a year absence. So, uh, while it was difficult, it was fun um, just to watch everybody and 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 be a fan of the game uh, and fan of our sport because I think we we play in the W the best basketball there is. And so as you know. Obviously not participating, it was really, really fun to watch, and um, but I'm much more happy that I'll be participating this season. Time for two more, we'll go to Chris Camella with Nightcast Media. Hey there, Christy, oh, welcome back. Um, you know, obviously the Sparks lost some, some key players in the last year with uh, Candice and Chelsea, among others. How do you feel like the leadership aspect uh, is going to be this year with, like you said, a lot of new faces and yourself personally stepping into that leadership role? How do you see yourself in that role? Thriving. That's I'm a leader. You know, that's a part of me when I left L.A. Um, it was to grow and to stretch myself. And in D.C. those three years, I had a great opportunity to, to step into that leadership position um, and grow personally. And I did. And so I'm really excited to be back here um, and, and, and take all the lessons and all the hardships and experiences that I had in, in the past three years and, and share them with, with our new team. And um, there's obviously already leadership here in NECA. Um, you know, she's been the foundation piece. Uh, I think this is her 10th year now. Um, so to, to reunite with her, um, you know, and, and now everyone else. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited and thankful for the opportunity, and and obviously it's a different team than I was expecting. But I think I'm more excited about it. You know, I'm I'm only concerned about uh, the players that are here and ready to compete, and I think it's going to be a really really fun journey. Uh, last one for Christy. We'll go to John W. Davis from Windsider. Hi, Christy. Uh, quick question. What would you personally like to work on to maintain and improve your game? I'd like to stay healthy. I think if I stay healthy, um, I'm good.